Hello there, good morning. It's just gone 8.30 on Thursday, the 28th of January. You are watching London Live News with me, Anthony Baxter. So the main story this morning... The United Kingdom Independence Party motion is therefore carried by 30 votes to 15. Labouring has become the first council in the UK to show support for leaving the EU. We'll assess what impact last night's outvote might have on the referendum. That's right, uh, Havering Borough Council has become the first publicly elected body in the UK to vote to leave the European Union. The motion was put forward by UKIP, urging the authority to declare an anti-EU position ahead of the referendum. It was passed during a debate last night. Let's get more reaction now from Elizabeth Jones, who is a GLA candidate for the UK Independence Party. Thank you very much for coming in. What impact do you think this vote will have? I think it will have a huge impact because for the first time um, it's opened the doors for all councils around the United Kingdom to hold these debates and also the timing is very critical because Havering is about to discuss its budget and it's about providing value for money and we have to accept that um, this coming year many people's council tax is going to be increased significantly and at the same time their services are going to be significantly reduced and it is right and proper that the council should investigate why this is happening and provide all the council taxpayers with value for money and this is an attempt to do that it's an analysis of the impact of EU regulations directives and laws upon uh, local council uh, powers so we have the issue with regard to um, agency working directive, the landfill directive, procurement services, so we're not really free to uh, give services or employ people to um, provide services without having to go through all the EU rigmarole. Also I understand with Havering that they will have an issue with having to replace their fleet of cars because of the low emission zone. Furthermore, councils are obliged, they have a statutory obligation to provide school places for uh, all children within their remit and they're also obliged to provide homes for the homeless and as you can appreciate with an open, uh, door, uh, open borders policy that the EU requires that we have, uh, it's almost impossible to uh, assess this, impossible to budget and it will result in uh, council taxpayers not getting value for money. Mm. Also we've got the EU referendum potentially being held on the 23rd of June, though of course that's very uh, a bit nebulous and uh, it's important to get these arguments out there because there will be a purda period of maybe a hundred days whereby councils will simply not be able to hold these debates so I think it's right and proper that these debates should be held now particularly with a run-up to uh, budgets. Mm. At, this, at this stage obviously a lot of uh, political debate going on yes. will, will it now allow the authority as a whole to suggest to its residents that they believe this is the way forward that Britain should leave the EU or is that something an authority shouldn't be getting involved in. I don't think that would be right for the authority to do that but I think that it's right that the authority has provided uh, an excellent platform for local council taxpayers and local residents to be made aware of the implications of EU membership and the sheer uh, deep uh, involvement that the EU has on all levels of council governance. Yeah. I think many people might not be aware of that because lots of arguments, certainly from even some politicians, were that the council shouldn't be discussing these issues at this level. They should be looking at the issues at a, at a more kind of ground level for those residents in Havering. Your argument I would, would be then, I guess, that the issues from what happens in the EU reflect all the way back down through to the levels of, of, of council tax yes. and everything. Yes. It, it, why then do some politicians argue against that and say we shouldn't be talking about this? Because they don't want to. They don't want to. They, they, I don't know what their stance is, particularly with EU membership. Clearly, I'm from UKIP. I want to out, and I think it's right and proper that all council taxpayers should be met well, and also not just council taxpayers, people who live in the area should be made fully aware of the implications. Another uh, big implication coming up, of course, is TTIP, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, and many local councillors are, are banding together to ensure that public services such as health and education, social services, are excluded from that remit and that's a very very important issue uh, in order to prevent uh, creeping privatization into these areas mm. so these are very important issues we are running out of time but if Britain votes to stay in the EU when we have this referendum yes. what next for UKIP where do you stand as a party well it all depends on the percentages it could well be an SNP style Scottish referendum style percentage in which case there'll be plenty more to um, chew on 
because I don't think that Cameron will be able to achieve any negotiation whatsoever. Our council tax is probably going to go up in every, well, not every borough, I'm sure perhaps Wandsworth and uh, Westminster will do their damnedest to keep their council tax as low as possible. But it, I imagine in all the other London boroughs, council tax will go up. And uh, people have a right to question that. Uh, I, I think there will be a future for UKIP, even if we lose the referendum, if we have a significant uh, majority of the vote saying that we perhaps don't know. The 45-55 for balance, I think, would ensure that we keep pressing onwards. OK, Elizabeth Jones for now. Thank you for your thoughts this Thank morning. Thank you. A candidate there for the UK Independence Party for the upcoming GLA uh, elections. Right, uh, we are going to take a break when we come back. We'll be telling you about uh, Transport for London's new initiative aiming to reduce congestion in the capital, plus a new exhibition with a personal connection to Parkinson's. We'll explain why these pieces of work aim to help those with the condition.